The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Big news. Ooh. Alan Joyce has stood down. I mean, he, he only had a little while to go anyway. But uh, a couple he... of months now, but Qantas has been in the news since last week again. Firstly, can I say I'm so glad Alice, Alan Joyce has stepped down. And can I say I'm Irish. I somewhat like scruples. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just Love think that um, I, I think that what's happened since COVID with that company has been crazy. Oh, the price gouging. The, and the price. The, the just help everything. they got from the government. I mean, Google Qantas News and you'll yes. see what's going and on. selling tickets on flights that had already been cancelled is a little bit on the nose. And, and, and equally, I've always found his pay to be disgusting, um, especially since all those problems that we've been having with Qantas since COVID. For me, personally, and I understand why he's getting paid that much, because the shareholders are going, mm. well, wait there, you're making us money. Yeah. But on the flip side, I always think personally, yeah. if that was me and I had all the money already, would I maybe have shown mm. some solidarity with what the rest of the yes. country was going and, through? And with and what the rest of the workers were going through. Well, yeah. well maybe yeah. you'd just get it right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because there's a right. lot of people who are running well, whether big Whether he businesses. got it right or wrong, he still got paid all yes, the bonuses. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I guess what coming back to it, the shareholders saying you got it right because you're getting those bonuses and hitting those targets. Mm. But either way... I'm that, mad at him. People Can I tell you mad. why I'm mad yeah, yeah. at him? So I am a loyal Qantas customer, you are. right? Um, so I fly, you know, travel's my thing, so I like to fly a lot. And I, I will always look at Qantas as my first port of call. Yeah. Um, and then recently I got an email saying, thank you for your loyalty. This is from Qantas. So everybody pretty much who flies with Qantas regularly got this email saying, um, we would like to give you a gift to say thank you for showing such loyalty to Qantas through these difficult times. And I'm like, how lovely. Mm. So the choice was he could choose 5,000 frequent fly points, which is... What's that? Nothing. It's and I've already got... Milk, mate. I've is, already that, is, is that like tickets at, like, remember Time Zone, where you'd, like, take up, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like four metres of tickets and then they give you, like, yeah. a lollipop? Yeah, it gets, that's exactly, it gets, exactly right, Nathan. It gets nothing. <laughs> you and, and I already have a lot of points from flying a lot. So I'm like, I don't need the points. I And the option was, because I... And this differed between customer, but because I'd flown with them a lot recently, they offered me 75 status credits. Now, that's the equivalent of, like... Three or four flights to the east coast, so that's actually oh, wow. quite a good bonus. And the well, state you can cash that in for that many flights. No, no, that's no. that state. That's what you would get, get for okay. flying those flights. And the status credits you use that bumps you up from bronze to silver to gold. Oh. Right, you've got to accrue a certain number yep. within your year. So I went, oh. I'm up for the status credits. So I, you had to do it by a certain day. So I did it on the last day. And then, um, but that day, the next day, so I, the 30th of August mm -hmm. is when you had to say what you wanted, yep. which I did. And then they're like, they'll be credited within the next four days. I'm yes. like, no problem. The 31st of August is when my membership year ends. Yep. Before they credited the, the, the points on the, um, on the 1st of September, which is a new membership year, they said they'd expired. What? So they took them immediately off me. So they gave you the points, but they gave them to you expired. Yeah. Like I made you a sandwich, but it's rotten. Yes. <laughs> because of your membership swap yes, over. Because of the so so even because I opted, they didn't credit them until my new membership year, but because I'd asked for them, I'd said I'd take them on the last day, which was still the old year. They just took them straight off me again. Wow! So, guys, and, and in, on the on the on my statement, it actually says that they took them before they gave them to oh me. Oh my god! They time I know, so, so, thank wow. you for your loyalty. Wow. You get nothing. Here's Too some, bad. Here's yeah. some status credits. They've expired. Lol. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You've, you've flown Ryanair. That seems very Ryanair to me. <laughs> it that does. does. I think I it mean, does. Just but, don't. Just don't give a loyalty bonus if yeah. that's the way that you're going to yeah. treat the customer that claims it. Yeah, Didn't they stitch you up when you were coming back from Europe one time when we were here? When I came back from. When I came back from Morocco and got stuck in Dubai for two days, Man, yeah, I would have they, gone that off was the chops. that was the same. They gave me the same the five thousand points, which is nothing to, yeah, as compensation. Yeah. And this is also remember that I so when I just went to Norway, I flew Qantas direct, and it was a medical emergency. I don't have any problem with this. We were the the flight was diverted to Singapore, but then they said you're leaving at two thirty in the afternoon, and then they said, oh wait, no, eleven thirty tonight. So that they. Ex like they delayed it even further, yeah. that delay. There was no compensation for that. It's just too bad. I sort of do no, sometimes have a problem with medical emergencies, by the way. I know that you shouldn't, <laughs> but sometimes I just think, you know what? Like you are delaying. I know that you're he going through dying, something Nathan. right now. I know I get that. I he get that, dying. but I do think I want to get there now. <laughs> um, and this is in my way. And then I think sometimes, well, wait there later in my life when I have an emergency, you're going to stand around and wait? Well, yes, they will. No. 
I like oh, those exact people. To pay me back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I'm with that's, you, man. That's the guy who was moaning <laughs> 50 years ago. He was just lucky that the business class was full of doctors going on the Euro vacay and they saved his life. But I'm outraged that my loyalty was honoured in such a miserable way. They took it all back straight away. They're pushing you away. It's been years. Yeah. Yeah. Sooner or later you're going to have to succumb and go, no more. Well, you know what? Companies should be um, a little bit more uh, gracious towards people's loyalty, especially these days. We want to know if you have been loyal loyal to a fault for a company, maybe a person, uh, maybe it's a sport. Yeah, maybe it's a workplace, maybe it's you as a customer. You are loyal and you've been spat in your face. Yeah. <laughs> we want to talk about that. We're going to give somebody a uh, Scarborough Live voucher. Ooh, hello. At $300. Sean. Oh, what do we do there? You can spend at participating businesses such as Colleen Pierce Healing. Oh, lovely. Colleen, nice Colleen. where Colleen Pierce heals you. <laughs> <laughs> you it? There's good. also um, Rip Curl, Need Bread and Coffee, Motion Clinic, Oak Pilates is a bunch down there. You can right. it on. Uh, was your loyalty not rewarded? Do they spit in your face? Andrew's in Come Scott. Hey, Andrew. Well, good morning, guys. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Great. I mean, other than morning. outraged, great, oh, yeah. Andrew. How was your yeah. loyalty not re- rewarded? Yeah, so my loyalty. So we're working up on the mines with a with a service provider. So you know, we've we've reached all the safety protocols. Everything's going well. The state manager's flowing up. And he said, we've got some um, some prizes for you at pre-start. Oh. So we get to the pre-start and we've got, you know, four, four boxes of chocolates, crunchies, picnics, cherry ripe. So everyone's stoked about that because we normally don't get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we've got to eat the chocolate bars and we found that they're four months out of code. Oh. <laughs> so I thought, you five bastards, here's a multi-million dollar company. Four, wow. Two chocolate bars each, and wow. they're four months out of code. We've got all the rejects. <laughs> the rejects going shot. in the bin. Andrew, that is oh, so Andrew, funny. Andrew great. reminds me of this time here at Nova, and I do not know what truck they fell off the back from, but we had these Mars bar balls. Yes, and yeah. so just like, like just like Mars, it was basically a ball, like yes. a little ball, but it's Mars bar chocolate. Anyway, they were like they were they were rolling out of the walls here we at Nova. We had so many, so of many, them. and they're all out of code, and it took us ages to eat them. And at the end, they were that. You you know when chocolate goes white? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we still ate them. We are. still. Because we, like you, were That's amazed right. the company got them for us. <laughs> That's no loyalty, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Troy's in Applecross. Hello. Hey, go, guys. Hey, hey Troy. Troy. How was your um, ro- uh, loyalty rewarded? Okay. Um, f- funny thing is, I uh, only did it yesterday with um, Qantas Visa cards. Yeah. So what it was, if you have a look at their Visa cards right now, they're doing a hundred thousand dollar bonus plus thirty thousand at the end of a year. I thought, oh, this is good. Yeah. You know, I never got that. So I've got a card, exactly the same card. So I rang them up and said, you know, could you, could yeah. I get the hundred thousand points? I never got this. Yeah. Oh no, no, you can cancel the card and redo it again, and we will give it to you. Yes. Said, so wait a minute. I'm a loyal customer. I never got any points. Yeah. But. You want me to cancel the card, redo it, and you will give me the points. But I don't want to change my card because I've got direct yes. debits coming out of it. That's right, because oh, that would be, mean a new number and everything. That's yeah. insane. So, Can I? Everyone. Yeah. So I want to tell everyone in the world, get ring Qantas Visa cards. All you need to do is cancel it and you get 140,000 points. <laughs> Troy, and, Troy, and you reduce your rate. It's exactly the same. I had the whole thing for years. I've been fighting with um, uh, Foxtel about this. Oh, my God. Because I've been Can I say, years. that's exactly years. what I was about yeah, to bring up. Mum and Dad mate. have been to, with Foxtel for 30 yep. years. Yep. Everyone else has the brand new boxes, mm-hmm. right? And then Mum and Dad rent. Why there? These amazing brand new IQ boxes. Yes. We've still got the old one. They rang and said, excuse me, can we get a new box? And then they said, no. They said, that's for new customers only. And then also new customers only get a certain type of deal. And it's like, wait there. Yes. I've been with you for 30 years. Yeah. Why aren't I getting the deal like yeah, that you're exactly getting? That's exactly the conversation I had. Yeah, so so literally it would be to cancel your yeah, subscription. 30 year subscription yep. and then you and get then the benefits again. that are thrown at a new customer. It's crazy. What is the thought? Reward your loyal know. customers. Reward loyalty, yeah. Dave. Loyalty. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's outrageous as what it is. Give me like, an L, they say. And then the other the other um, letters. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. It's, probably why you, it's not a spelling bee. It's probably why you're giving an oilty. Your <laughs> cheerleading career didn't kick off. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Uh, Scarborough Life voucher value to $300 to spend at participating business such as Colleen Pierce Healing.
There we go. Have a crack at that. That's going to go to Andrew because those chocolates. I know. Out of that. That's a stitch up. Pretty yeah, funny. it's from a multi-billion dollar company. Oh. And they went dumpster diving. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Dave Cullen's in with us right now. Hello, Hello Dave. Hello. Oh, hello there, fiddly dear potatoes. Oh, welcome yes, back. Dave, hello, good to see you. sir. Thank you. I'm really to... glad that you're here. We want to talk about something that we've read in the news. Oh, and I, I thought, you know what, this, this might be this might be your bag. Okay. This might be up to oh, alley. Yep. yep. So, these passengers on a Delta flight between Atlanta and Barcelona, they'll delay eight hours. Well, that's a long flight, eight too. Eight hours, right? And yep. how long's the flight? Um, uh, a bit don't close know. to eight yeah. hours, I think. Whoa. So, they basically were delayed by two hours to take off, and then they took off in the air, and they were in the air for an hour, and then they had to turn around. There was no choice, the pilot said, but to turn around. I agree. Here is the pilot talking to the tower about the problem they have with a passenger. <laughs> Negative. It's just a, a biohazard issue. I, you know, we've had a passenger who had diarrhea all the way through the airplane, so they want us to come back to Atlanta. That is a biohazard. Oh. Diarrhea, I quote... All the way through the airplane. So, oh so morning, if you're just having your breakfast. That person no, went to the everyone. toilet. No. What? They went to or the they, toilet. They I think they might have tried they to go to the toilet, and then, the, then, then there was this yeah. trail of where oh, they... Oh, no. Had been. Maybe their pants were down and they had turbulence no. and they staggered out <laughs> of the door and just sprayed it everywhere. <laughs> no. Do you it's know what not I mean? going into like any like intimate detail. Like shaking up a bottle of Coke. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like the, when you go on the Gravitron and you, and you vomit. <laughs> that would be the worst place for that to have all be on the Gravitron. Oh, yeah. my God, could you but imagine? But when there's a whole plane full of people looking How at you because you've turned around, they're going to Barcelona. Like, they're going... There's a, it's a substantial travel. There should be on each flight, and I know that seating is, is you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, really scarce, but yep. um, I do feel like there should be a, a seat in private for people like this, like a shame seat. So you've really embarrassed yourself on the flight and you've got eight hours left and they go, you know what, you can't be seen by everyone for the next eight hours. Let's shame. Take your, let's take you out the back. Yeah. And they just pull a little curtain around you. I mean, that'd be great yeah. if, shame. if they hadn't shame. made a mess shame. all up and down the aisle. That's yeah, probably you know the bigger the issue. Yeah. No, 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 I'm fine. But mm. I'm just, uh, there are many issues. I'm just worried about the person mm. because that's, I mean, they didn't want that to come out of them. And no, they, and, and as somebody who has been stricken with Delhi Belly on a flight home from India, yeah. I can tell you it ain't pleasant, and it's it, it's a, a lifetime of misery for that the extent of that flight. Do not recommend zero stars. But I didn't manage to do it in the aisle. First thing you've got to do is got to you got to wrap your jumper around your waist <laughs> yep. as a safety a safety net. I was lucky that my John, my John, seat John to cover it. You'd need Princess Diana's yeah. veil. <laughs> <laughs> my seat was true from the toilet, and I switched. I was on the window. I switched with the girl on the aisle so that I would be I had easy access but thank God it was, oh, Dave, it was horrible I feel like this is something oh. that would happen to you yeah definitely they, where the masks drop down you need to have like an emergency what, and just, just, I want to put one on your bum yeah. <laughs> a bum mask That's a bum mask oh, it's, 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 sorry, you just have to press, press the button <laughs> <laughs> it spenses it for you I mean oh, uh, it's not good. a flight what I mean, flight. first of all, how angry would you be that your flight was delayed I and know. then you caught oh, yeah. that straight up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely you'd prefer just to get there and wash up. Uh, no, you don't know how bad it was. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it's, one it's, person. It, yeah, yeah. I know. And it said all through the plane. Yes. Oh, yeah. And they had to turn back. And bi- biohazard was it, the word. <laughs> wow. But it's not like spewing where you can have a domino effect. You can have you can have domino diarrhea. Well, someone no. that was on the flight had commented and said, yeah, um, my, my, hus- oh, my husband was on that flight and they said Whoa. it was it, it was stunk so much. Yeah. They said they tried wow. to cover it with vanilla scented air freshener, oh. but oh. all that smelt like was vanilla poo. Yes. <laughs> That's put everybody off vanilla ice cream now forever. Forever. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. You know what Dave Callan just told us? <laughs> I can't even remember. Dave, Dad, you, I've what? been to Burning Man, and oh, we yeah. said, "Hey, why didn't you speak to us about that during prime time?" Oh yeah, Dave, <laughs> Burning Man. It's all the it's, weather. It's gone bananas over there. It's People gone stuck. B- it's really weird because, like, when I went, there was no moisture of any yes, kind. Because it's in the middle yeah. of the desert. It's in the middle of the desert. It's a dust bowl. Like you have to bring goggles and a mask. Yeah. This is before masks were, yes. you know, part of the thing. Zeitgeist. That's right, because I remember saying it was, it was before masks were a thing, yeah. and it, that was yeah. what made it look so much more apocalyptic. Yeah, you got to back then. On, get, yeah. well, but what? it puzzles me the people that go because we see Casey Donovan's over there right mm, now, yeah. and we saw that Chris Rock was getting a lift home, mm. you know, trying to trying to you know get out of that um, chaos. Oh, wow. But like, yeah. you, I, I can sort of see Dave would be at Burning Man. Yeah, but what do you? <laughs> so where you stay at? How do you yeah. organise yourself to be there, Dave? Well, I got there. On, I went on a bus from San Francisco. It took about eight or nine hours. <laughs> we got there three hours later. 
late so it was dark and we had to put up our tent in the darkness and a dust storm kicked in so I had to put on goggles for, I'd never been in a dust storm before <laughs> goggles a head torch a mask putting up a tent I'd never put up before in uh, almost pitch and wearing black. nothing but Christmas lights <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had another head torch down here yeah. basically that was all and the, it was a baptism by fire but once you get your, your tent up it's great the only pro- one of the main problems is it is blisteringly hot. Not right now. Gross. This one's a completely yes. different ball game. And that's why altogether. it's thrown them all so much. Yeah. It's just unexpected. But oh, what do you do during your day? Yes. yes. Like, 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 so I know that there's like, oh, so and so is doing a poetry reading over here, and um, mm. someone else is. And everyone's like, taking you know, acid. Doing a dramatic <laughs> reading of the vagina monologue so against a, a saxophone. That, you've been there, obviously. Yes. That's exactly what, what happens. The, well, basically, you wake up at 6 a.m. because it is so, so hot, hot, like desert sun. Yep. And you're freezing at nighttime, so you wear all your clothes you've got in the world world in this little one man tent I had and then the sun gets you out you can't stay in your tent because you'll cook and then there's you have a there's a leaflet because nobody has their phones with them all your phones you just leave them behind in San Fran because you don't want to take it because it'll get full of dust yeah so you've got this little booklet and it tells you what's on for the day and it's exactly stuff like that there's like drum circles <laughs> djembe I can't drumming lessons yes. yoni insertions oh yeah oh, okay. <laughs> lots of those yeah lots of lingam massages yes. all that <laughs> sort of thing going on um, finger symbols <laughs> I think there'd be a lot of finger symbols what did you get involved in then did you go to the drum circles did um, you yeah, no no I, I hardly did anything I, he, I went just, to, he went to the yoni thing oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to be honest I didn't feel hot enough like everyone there is super hot oh like, okay, guys they've in, all got as no, in I attractiveness was, I was physically like sweating oh, not, they're also a double meaning yeah I was sweating a lot basically and uh, everyone there is super attractive and shredded and I, I know just, to I me didn't... it's just a series yeah. of crocheted bikinis that's all it was yeah was it? And, and what and, about, and, the, what and, about and, the women and, and <laughs> hair, to be honest yeah and hair feathers hair feathers there was the, the year I went um, there's, a, there's a fashion every year and it might be yeah. um, hair yeah. feathers one year this or year body glitter it was yeah. shirt and that was when all the blokes decided to wear T-shirts with absolutely no pants and shoes. Oh, <laughs> shoes. Oh, the shoes are important. Yeah, like in Deadpool. <laughs> it was disgusting. So just literally the shirt. Yeah, shirt and, and shoes. Then just, and, and then, then and just doodle. You would just and see shoes. the bottom of the doodle dangling about. <laughs> and it was called shirt it was it was like bobbing for apples. It was, <laughs> so, it was that was, so that was the thing that everyone was like, oh, yeah, that was the fashion that year. That's sad, but there was a backlash social. pretty quickly. It looked, it looked like Pitbull in a mosh pit. <laughs> <laughs> it was just not pleasant. Was no. there any um, shirt vagging going on? Or shirt not? vagging was not a thing and never mm. will be. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? We've got to have a both ways. Equal opportunities with the shirt genitals, Thank please. Thank you for <laughs> your great. insights, Dave Callan. <laughs> Check out Dave's fine comedic stylings this weekend. <laughs> at the Comedy Lounge in Fremantle. Are you doing gigs Friday and Saturday? That's me. Yes. Good on you, go. Dave. It's Ross. awesome. Jeez, a lot of awkward words there, wasn't there? Which was the worst for you? That entire segment oh. was a tongue twister. The, the, the shirts with the nothing and then the... <laughs> that's like a big call. That's and what you, you do around the house, isn't it? <laughs> I do not do that. I do not do that. No. How much does that cost? By, by the way, Dave, so all this sounds like a rather... What? Intense a shirt f***ing <laughs> three. <laughs> Just the cost of the shirt. All right, you guys are done. <laughs> You guys are done. Get out of here. Came on, ten bucks. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.